Thank you. Right. You're introducing us. Yeah, good, good afternoon, good morning. We're here at uh, New Mexico Tech Macy Center with Veronica Lish and Val and I, with both with Val, and we're doing a recorded vocal with Val and takeaway Val. Well, thank you uh, and welcome everybody. We're here at Macy Center, the recently renovated Macy Center, and there's a, a really interesting art project going on right now, so I would encourage everybody in our, our listening audience if you have time this weekend it's going to be a great weekend there's going to be events here at tech that we're going to be talking about momentarily come to macy center and check out the art i have a real special guest with me today rana rana kalish who is our director of performing arts series at new mexico tech and you've been here what a few years rana a few years <laughs> um yeah in, in november It'll be 30 years. Wow. Who, who would have thunk it? But there it is. Um, I, I fell in love with Socorro and I fell in love with my job and, and 30 years went by like like that. And, and you know, I think it's important to recognize this work because in an environment now in education, especially in, in high school, middle school, you know, uh, elementary school, you don't see a lot of performing arts anymore. You know, it's very, very, very few. Uh, some of the band programs have been gone uh, for a while because of cutbacks, and I'm sure you've suffered a lot of a lot of uh, uh, issues with, with funding. But you still manage to bring a lot of great shows here. Yep. Well, we we keep plugging, and um, I, I completely agree with you about the kids not having that many opportunities in school. With, I mean, there's there's been people that have done some theater, done some music, but the types of programs we had when I first came to Socorro are, are completely different than they were back then. We had a really happening band program, a really happening theater program in both the middle school and the high school, but it, it's been um, struggling since then. So the kids do get to come to youth concerts. More than half of the performing arts series shows, we bring the kids from the Socorro, Socorro Consolidated Schools, and of course, before the pandemic, although this year, Magdalene Lena too, and, and, and before the pandemic, Alamo, and we brought a lot of programs out to Alamo. So I, I'd like to think that PAS has been supplementing those cutbacks. It's certainly not taking the place of a theater oh, music absolutely. program, which we sorely need. So tell us a little bit, going back, where are you from? How did you find this little community of Sequoia? Where'd you come from? Wow, we all's going to get right right into this. Let's and, do and, it. Yeah, and uh, I uh, honestly, I, I came first from Albuquerque. I moved to Albuquerque in the early 80s. Uh, from Chicago is where I grew up, but I've been in New Mexico more than twice as many years as I was in Chicago. Yeah. I, I realize that New Mexico always considers you a transplant, but um, and I ended up down in Socorro um, when I, I kind of needed a change in my life from the things I had been doing in Albuquerque. I was running a desktop publishing business and I was promoting local bands and putting events on all over Albuquerque. That was in the uh, all the way till the early 90s, and I got here in 92 because I had two in very, very close friends here who I went to college with. Um, one who... Anyways, one who worked at, at NRAO and, and, and went to grad school here at New Mexico Tech and another um, who ended up here as a teacher and um, and also worked as a principal and as a speech and language pathologist. And so that's how I ended up in Socorro. So did you... Did you have education in, in performing arts, or is it just something you aspire to? Great, great question, Val. And um, especially since this is Women Fest weekend, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention this, and, yeah, and, we're, and, we're and uh, I know we're going to get to it, but the reason I, I wanted to mention that is we're hoping that a lot of the women at Women Fest talk about how they got into their own individual careers. So that's really important that you, you I mean, a, a great question that you asked me. So my background was in both the arts and community organizing, political science, public policy. So I, I started off as a classical um, a horn player. I played the French horn and I played piano as a kid and my mother was really into the arts and always um, took us to lots of things. My father was a ballroom, com competition ballroom dancer in his handsome younger years. And so I, I got an undergraduate degree um, in political science because my, my passion was, was community and community organizing and um, and. And you know, Val, I, I was very idealistic, as I have a feeling you were as well, and still are. I think we both 
still are, mm -hmm. um, that I, I wanted to change the world, and I wanted to change the world through the, through the arts and through community coming together. So um, that's really my background in classical music. I took some dance classes. I took some theater classes. I had a lot of background in community organizing, public policy, that kind of thing. So uh, this job, and I had done a lot of things like that in, in Albuquerque, bringing people together in a whole variety of different ways, um, in the arts and music. Uh, I had a little newspaper going in Albuquerque. Did a lot of different things in Albuquerque. And uh, so this, this job in Socorro really brought a lot of things together. I love the university environment I always have. I love small towns. I, I, I love the diversity of Socorro County. It's such an interesting community. So when this position came up in the Performing Arts Series, and it was really a much different position when I started here 30 years ago, Val. It was just about six shows a year. It was, it was almost all classical music. And um, I, I, and I kept the classical music, but really tried to branch out. My, my initial passion was to get into the schools, to get kids and families involved. And, and, and I feel, you know, I, I think there's more people involved in the Performing Arts Series now than there was when I got here 30 years ago. We started the National Dance Institute program. Yep. It's been going for 27 years. All our fourth graders get that program. We also have that in Magdalena. And for a few years, we had it in Alamo. We have the Community Arts Party every year, the Youth Concerts Program, the Fourth of July celebration kind of have a legacy of things yeah. um, with the performing arts series and I am quite certain that I just branched off on whatever the original question was that you asked me but uh, so, so you, you mentioned a little bit about your family did you have any siblings I had one brother who is eight years older than me and uh, uh, you know, when you're eight years apart, you probably have this experience as well, Val. Yeah. You know, you, you sort of have different, you grow up in different worlds. When my brother was growing up, my parents were really poor and they were struggling. By the time I came around, things were a little easier for them. Um, but um, my brother was a, a, a sports fiend. He loved baseball and all the sports and he was a tennis player. So our lives were pretty different. I played in band. We, we, had, we really did a lot of different things. And he didn't play any instruments at all? He didn't play any instruments at all, no. I'm like, not musical, but always supportive of me, though. I love my and adore my brother. Yes. So you, you mentioned it a little bit about how how the whole performing arts series has progressed over the last 30 years. Now, I the shows I like are... I wouldn't even thought I was going to like it when I got here. You know, we, we do different types of acrobats. I really love the multicultural uh, shows that you bring from other countries. How do you find those, those programs and how do you convince them to come to Socorro? <laughs> Well, the convincing's not hard if you can pay for it. And of course, we don't have that much money here, so I'm off in wheeling and dealing. Um, so one of the things that I've been very active in for my entire career is we have a statewide presenters alliance, and so we put tours together. And the, so we can, if we get two or three um, communities who want to do the same show, we can offer a, 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 a kind of a package deal, if you will, yeah, yeah. that makes a little more, because this is a big state, there's a lot of travel, time. Um, so that's one of the ways. And the ways we find acts, um, the, right from the get-go, I started going to booking conferences. I attend festivals. Um, I, I'm very familiar with all the booking agents. There's hundreds and hundreds of booking agents, and each one has a roster of artists. And almost all booking agents have um, a variety. They'll have some multicultural shows and ethnic shows. They'll have family shows. They'll have um, uh, some, a little bit of classical music, a little bit of popular music. Uh, the one thing I, I know that a lot of Socorroans, you know, have wished is that I, we would bring shows in, you know, that's top 40 or things that, you mm -hmm. know, that, that play large arenas up in Albuquerque. And, you know, the thing to remember and why I, I have focused in my career more on emerging artists is number one, we can afford to pay. Yep. And number two, um, people really aren't used to paying the same kind of ticket prices in Socorro that they're willing to pay. If this has been my experience, Vail, that they're willing to pay um, at the casinos or at the major theaters in Albuquerque and Santa Fe and um, and around the state. So we're charging, a, we've been revolving around $15 a ticket price, you know, and um, we only have 600 seats. 
students and a lot of our students come in for free and the tickets are really low so if, if you actually sat down and started doing the math you'd realize that um, I, I can barely we can barely pay for a band right from here in Socorro so one of the reasons that this is possible is because um, I, I have put a lot of energy in my career into fundraising and there's been people who've been so supportive in the community there's a, 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 a whole cadre of local sponsors that donate between 500 and a few thousand dollars um, faithfully every year and, and, and that has really helped us to keep the prices down but booking agents, festivals yep. um, that's how we find the AX the, the international AX, there's so many of them and truthfully the uh, artists want to perform, yeah. I mean they want to come out and, 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 and be in front of audiences and Socorro is a great audience and, the, and a lot of the times performers are super happy here I'll, I'll tell you because they have they have there's senior citizens there's kids there's families um, ethnically it's pretty diverse in the audience um, so yeah and you can see the energy is different from when the kids are here versus the, the actual show in the evening it seems sometimes it's a little bit different as far as the atmosphere in, in, in the in the theater but um, on most shows that I'll come with my son and I'll sit in the back of the theater the kids really do get engaged and, and, and one in particular that I, I really enjoy it is uh, when you bring the educational stuff like Philippe uh, D'Andrade who's with National Geographic has come I think uh, two or three times and talked about his his tours around the world underwater in the jungles and people are riveted to that and then when they get to see the technology they use you could see that they really like and uh, my daughter's one of the success stories I think in that uh, um, we had the advantage of sticking around after the show when the buses would load up and leave because Elena's homeschool and she went up on stage and everybody there was happy to engage with her for another half hour and in fact up until even a few years years ago uh, Philippe was sending Elena emails with pictures from Central America and stuff like that and they would kind of work on on her art together so you know I like just the different uh, events we get to witness there and I think that's all due to your hard work so and, and you know and I'll just mention and because the performing arts series does bring a lot of different things the one where you meant where you mentioned Felipe and just to make sure because I know that a lot of different people um, possibly tune into this program in the morning is that particular program was organized by the Basque del Apache National Wildlife Refuge and really it was Deb Caldwell um, in concert with a couple other organizations so it was really Macy Center and Deb and, yeah. and some others who put it together but but the fact that we have this wonderful venue makes it possible for us to bring all kinds of different things and, and the performing arts series isn't the only show in town yeah. right? there's other things going on too so I just want to make sure I gave credit where credit's due yeah, and, but and, that was a great one yes and I think it should it's worth mentioning again when the posters do go up for the shows, you list all the different sponsors. So if anybody's out there and you're at Sophia's or one of the other restaurants in town and you see the posters, recognize please uh, all those sponsors that are on uh, that are listed on there. So let's talk a little bit. Transition into this week. Yeah. Uh, this month is Women's History Month, and uh, I know you put a celebration on for at least a couple of years now for, for Women's History Month. And let's talk a little bit about what's going on starting today. Okay, that's a great, great thing. And, and, and just to say, last year we did it, we did a completely online music festival, you know, yeah. given that people couldn't come to the theater. But starting today, at one o'clock, and Women Fest has come together as a collaboration among a lot of different groups, uh, with the Performing Arts Series certainly spearheading, and, and at the culmination of a whole month of activities, it started off with International Women's Day on March 8th, and there's been speakers and activities happening all month, but we plan this all along to be the culmination of Women's History Month. So today at one o'clock, there is a panel that has been organized by our local chapters of the Association of University Women both the student chapter and in the professional chapter that's been in Socorro for years and years and years, always been a very active organization. And they put together a panel about the topic of 
climate change and it's called Voices of Women, Our Climate, Our Community. And they brought together, yeah, they brought together women from a, diverse backgrounds and fields in New Mexico um, that are involved with what the impacts of climate change might be in New Mexico, to look at it from different angles, to talk about it from their own perspective, and to really analyze the whole issue in our community. And and, and, I, and so that's starting at 1 o'clock. And again, there's a panel of six women. It's also going to be live streamed. And you can get to the um, the Zoom. It's, it's going to be the live stream on Zoom. And if you go to the Performing Arts Series website, website nmt.edu slash PAS and you click on the um, Voices of Women, there's a place to click. There's a place to sign up for the Zoom if you want to watch it through Zoom, but you're totally welcome. Please come to Macy Center. Um, we'll have plenty of room to social distance if that's an issue for you and that's at one o'clock and it's free and it's going to be an absolutely fascinating and interesting panel of very dynamic women and after the panel which is uh, probably going to end around 2 30 we're going to have a reception with some fun free food and a chance to meet the panelists and, and to chat about some of the things that you you'll think about from listening to this panel so very excited we've never done anything like this before but the performing arts series in AUW have been collaborating on a variety of events this is our third Voices of Women in the last four years. So we've done we've done a lot of other collaborations together. So and I love collaborations. I can't say enough about collaborations. Mm -hmm. um, and then at six o'clock.